Did you ever have a doubt about your own live streaming OBS skills and thought to yourself, maybe I should have listened to my parents and become a janitor? Maybe you feel like quitting because you're not making any progress? Well, that's something we all have in common. Am I really good enough? Luckily, there's a simple way to test this. A tool to measure whether you're new or pro or somewhere in between. To find out what skill level you are and learn what your next steps are gonna be for your live streaming journey. Now let's start with the five noob tips or the beginner tips. Nothing is more frustrating than a full source list where everything looks exactly the same. And that is why I color label my sources creating a structure in my entire source list. For example, my audio is gonna have a blue color while my static assets like graphics or overlays are gonna be orange. The browser source alerts will be yellow and so on. You're gonna be streaming better than a 10 year old who just finished a two liter bottle of soda in three minutes. And the next tip will also help you with that. If you wanna add a camera with a specific mask or overlay effect that you're gonna use in multiple scenes of your stream, normally you'd have to set it up in each scene and then add the overlays and masks as well in every scene. Well, stop doing that. Save time by just creating a camera camera in its own scene, exactly how you want it to look, and then just add that scene to any other scene that you want. Boom, created once and added to any scene with two clicks. And your audio mixer can be just as messy as your source list, and some of it is just clutter. But you can make the audio easier to read by right clicking and selecting vertical layout. You can also hide audio that you don't need to see by right clicking on the ones that you don't want and selecting hide. You can unhide anything again by right clicking and and selecting unhide all. For the next tip, let's get complete control over the preview window. Sometimes these windows are too big or too small. You just hold down the spacebar and now you see your cursor turn into a hand. You can now use the mouse wheel to scale the window. I see you saying it already, Trevor. I did this and it didn't work. It happens. If the hand doesn't appear when you hold down the spacebar, you right click and select preview scaling and then the canvas with your resolution. Now it should work. But we can't just stop there, right? You can also right click on any source in the window and do all sorts of cool things. When you right click it in the preview and go to transform, you can reset any crop or scale, flip sources, rotate it, or even center a source. Now be honest guys, did you know all five tips? If that's true, you've passed the noob section. You are no longer here and you can move up to the next level. There are so many built-in transitions in OBS you really don't need to create your own at this point. If we add a Luma wipe, there's like 50 to choose from and you can preview each one and just select the one you like and you're set. And you can add as many as you want. And here's a cool little tip on transitions. This little duration figure you see over here can pretty dramatically affect the feel of some of these transitions. So mess with the settings a bit and get some really cool results. You can also select a different transition for each scene. To do that, just select the scene and right click on the transition override and select the transition that you wanna use when you switch to this scene. So now every change can be totally unique. You can even take that one step further with the transition matrix. It's a simple plugin that takes a few seconds to download and install and it's totally free. And once you do, you can choose a different transition for each scene, depending upon the scene that you're actually coming from. For example, I really like a quick transition to my tutorial screen from the main screen. So I can select something that's very quick, but I like to go from the Monica cam to any other scene a little bit slower just in case she's still talking over the transition. Now we can switch to the tutorial scene from two different scenes with two different transitions. Just another way to make your live streams a lot more dynamic. So here's another organizational trick. You know how you're streaming along and you're in the zone and it's time to switch to that one scene. Not a common scene, but one you may use once or twice every stream in every week. And you end up scrolling through the entire scenes list just to find it every time. Just staring at the screen, 
scrolling and you're like, I know it's right here, but it takes way too long to find it every time you use that scene. Simple fix here, move the scenes over here where you get a little more room so that you don't need to scroll through as much. Then you right click and select grid mode. This kind of makes scenes more button-like and it allows you to organize them just a little bit. Now this gives you a lot better chance of finding it right away without a lot of searching. And you can take it one step further by assigning a hotkey to that scene that you know you're going to remember. Let's be honest, the less you have to think about running your stream, the more you can focus on entertaining the audience. And that's what it's all about. And with that last tip, we completed the intermediate level. I mean, at this point, we don't suck. We actually kind of know what we're doing. Now, did you get a 10 out of 10 score? Let me know in the comments down below. And now comes the five tips for the pros. Starting with organization at a whole new level. Now, if you're streaming every week, just like us, you get your stream working just the way you want it, and you want to be sure that it stays that way. But of course, as streamers, we're also never satisfied, and we want to try new things and expand our streaming knowledge and skill. Well, we can do both at the same time. So let's save out our stream so we can't lose it. To do that, we wanna save out our profile and scene collections to a separate folder so we can easily recover it if something goes wrong. So just click on profile, be sure the correct one is selected, and click on export. Name our profile to export, and usually I use the date so I know exactly when I saved this from. Then I do the same thing with my scene collections. Now that's a collection of all the scenes, sources, filters, and of course, all the layout data. So now we're totally safe to tinker. But wait, I don't really want to tinker with our production live stream. So I go into scene collection and make sure my live stream collection is selected. Then I select duplicate and name the duplicate live stream tinker. And now I can do whatever I want with the tinker live stream without having to worry about it affecting my regular production live stream. And if you're planning on experimenting with any of the settings, you should do the same thing with the profile. Make a duplicate one and then you can tinker away. We are at the pro level, man. So we are at the point where we know the software well enough to get really creative and try new things. And some of the best things to experiment with are dynamic scene elements like the show and hide transitions. I bet you thought I didn't know about this one, huh? But I do. So to use this, select the element that you want to appear or disappear from your scene. Then you right click it and select show or hide transition and select the direction that you want it to show or hide. Now, when you use this eye icon, the asset is going to appear and disappear with that motion. And you can hotkey this or set it up on your stream deck as well. Now this becomes really powerful visually when you combine it with the move transition. So let's say we're doing a pop culture stream and we wanna start each topic with an intro scene where the assets we plan to discuss are actually turned off. So we kick off the first topic and select that little eyeball and that asset appears. Then when we want to, we can change scenes to really highlight the asset with the move transition and it looks absolutely seamless. Now this creates a really professional format, but it also means you don't have to create so many new scenes for every stream. We just replace the assets in the intro scene, and then we only have to create the highlight scene with the unique layout that we want for each topic. Oh man, our streams are gonna look so good. They say variety is the spice of life. Now I don't know who they are, but in this case, they're totally right. If you haven't installed stream effects, you're really missing out on a lot of ways to take your stream to the next level. But this one has a small caveat. For OBS 28 and the current version 29, stream effects is in beta and may have some bugs, which is why my production streams, I still use OBS 27 for these features. But they are totally worth it. I use stream effects for a bunch of different things, but the main one is camera masking. Now I can make a static or dynamic mask for any video, image, or camera in seconds. All a mask is is a simple black and white image of a shape that you can use to create the shape for your chosen asset. This is what one looks like. We just plug it in here like this and this is what we get. However, once we do this, if we look at that camera in other scenes, well, we get the same mask in every scene. And that sucks, that's not what we want. Well, Professor Mike can help you fix it. Stream Effects has an awesome feature called Mirror Source. So what you do is create a scene with the source that you wanna use with the mask. This will be the unmolested source that you can reuse over and over again. Then we go into the sources 
brushes on any scene and select Mirror Source. Now we can use the original source or create as many masked sources as we want. Now I know you didn't see that coming. All right, maybe it didn't blow your mind, but this will. You can spend a little more time editing one of these masks and boom, you have an animated mask that you can use in any source. These things look so cool with just a little work. I bet you didn't know that. Oh man, our stream is gonna look so good. We're already like here somewhere, but we can take it even farther. Let's push all the pro buttons with a simple free plugin. I'm talking about the downstream keyer. This thing does a couple of awesome things. When we reach the pro level, we're using alerts to get our audience more involved with our stream, but it sure is a pain in the butt putting the alerts in every scene that we want them in. But with the downstream keyer, we don't have to. You create a scene with the alerts in it, you then add that scene to the downstream keyer and select it here and boom, now your alerts are going to be in every single scene. But there's so much more you can do here. If you have sound effects or video assets that you wanna be able to use in every scene, you can add them to your downstream keyer and you're not going to then have to add them to every scene. They're just going to work when you click the button. All right, this next tip is one that I don't use much because I create separate recorded content, but if live content is gonna be the main source of content on your channel, you're gonna need a way to repurpose it easily. We wanna make things as easy as possible. I mean, we're pro level streamers, not editors here. The free plugin InfoWriter is gonna enable you to set hotkeys that are gonna create a text file. And that text file is gonna have marking points for your live stream that's gonna make it easy to separate and edit later. Then all you have to do is load up your footage, read the file and make a few cuts and you got the clips that you want to create an awesome video with. Time is money and this simple plugin is gonna save you hours of searching through long streams for good moments. All right, what's the last thing you should do with a new stream class? You, Onion. No, not swim naked in a pool of apple juice. What? That sounds really sticky. Get out, Onion, get out. Test is the answer. You need to test your hard work to be sure that everything works the way that you intend it to. Every platform has its own test stream procedures, but it's pretty easy on YouTube. You just create an unlisted test stream, grab the stream key and paste it into OBS, and then you click go live. Now I know it sounds crazy, but you wanna test everything to be sure that you get the expected results. So if you're gonna be gaming, fire up the game. If you're gonna be recording while you're streaming, you wanna fire up the recording as well. If you add guests, you have to test it. Test every transition, sound effect, and video asset as well. The time you spend here will pay off with a smoother running stream, and even more importantly, when something goes wrong, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of what you need to do to actually fix it. I mean, that pretty much wraps it all up right there. Now I'm super curious what's your final score, guys, because we've gone through everything. Did you make it all the way to the pro level? If not, don't worry. Just watch this video over here for the next step in your learning process. My name for today is Professor Mike. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.